My name is Jesse Stock. I'm the program director at the Athens County Foundation. We have a savings account and we're able to invest in community projects that are identified as um, solutions for community challenges or community needs. Two examples of projects that we were able to fund. One was the Athens trustees identified a community space in the Plains. The Athens Foundation was able to do some matching funding so they could actually purchase an outdoor learning center that was not previously available for that community. Another example of a project that we funded was the Gloucester Village project. They identified a building that was dilapidated and needed to be removed. Um, that particular project is a multiple phase project, so hopefully now that the building has been destroyed and demoed, will return to a green space that then could be used for community gatherings, a green space, a meeting place for people to have conversations. We live in an area that has plenty of needs. What we have is also folks that are not engaged in determining what they want their future to be. The process of community change work involves around finding people in their communities to come to tables to talk about what we agree is perhaps a way forward. We feel that this is a core practice within Appalachia, that we could easily live in isolation, but when enabled and empowered and engaged in the process of identifying need, we can voice that in a way that leads to more benefit for our community. And instead of waiting for our government to provide our solutions, we are able to mobilize and identify and, and create more resilient communities when we're engaged at a local level. When we can find public, private ways to collaborate on these issues, that's the real goal. Because there is no... Um, there's not enough money in the world to address all of our needs, but engagement is definitely a way to build more resiliency. Where there's power in voice, when we actually know our neighborhood, that we know the people that live within our communities, to organize and lift up those voices to a, a larger context. We don't all arrive at the same kind of life experiences at the same moment, but being able to identify people within our community, that it's not just one voice, that we need multiple voices to create change, can be the very first step in creating a network or community members, a neighborhood of people that believe that we can come up with some solutions for big issues that um, affect not just where we live, but the world. You have to start somewhere. Waiting for somebody to provide that solution is not gonna happen unless you step into that uncomfortable zone and saying, I'm willing to make a change, I'm willing to venture out and meet some people that I don't know and perhaps find if we have some commonality about what we want to do together versus waiting for somebody to supply that answer. What are the first steps for engaging in a community project? I think this is the one that requires just a little bit of willingness to think outside the box, to identify who are the people within your community that are already involved in creating change and are already supporting activities that could really inform perhaps how that particular neighborhood works. We can all see the issues within our community, but can we have a discussion, a civil discussion about what the change we wanna see? Can we approach it in a way that includes other voices with different perspectives? And can we identify some initial goals? Be inclusive, but write down what are your five goals for our community? An open-ended question, one that allows different insights for what they want and what they value. If you think about values and then setting up priorities, 
What are those priorities? What are the projects that would build that valued community that we're looking for? Then I might say, look for the commonality in these themes and their values and what you want. What are those priorities? Now list them out. Let's identify which ones are at the top. And if you do it in that way, you may identify some new things you hadn't thought about. It's a really important aspect of being inclusive with other people's objectives and what they want. Because we're not going to be able to do all the work, but we can at least be participative when identifying that we all have personal interests in communities, in change, and then by identifying what is the most priority, you create the synergy for what you can actually accomplish. We can make a lot of assumptions in our work as community organizers and community developers about what the change should be and what strategies would best lead us in the path of change. But I would say a fundamental skill that they should have is, is listening first to the community. I think you also have to be purposeful in understanding that equity and power and privilege are something that not everybody has in community organizing. And being respectful of the fact that some of the communities that you may be working with are very strong and are approaching the work in a different way. But if you listen to what their history and their culture is from an a neutral or unbiased opinion without making assumptions. You can start building on what is the core principle of community development is based upon a relationship, a trusted relationship. You gotta start there. There's a history within these communities. They've lived there. They take ownership and pride for those. But if you start by just listening, we can get a lot further in this work. We do follow a logic model for strategizing the change and impact that we want to see within our communities. But fundamental principle for identifying change at a community level is collaboration. We do think that we want to implement change that has success, that does have real impact. We want to know that projects are being a evaluated for not just a number of meals served or events that have happened, but what is that human story? What is the life that has changed because of this? And we want to tie that back to not just that we made a grant within a program, but for a philanthropic mission. What was that altruism that drew somebody to want to invest in change. The process is not just a, a logic model or collaboration. It's a human's life. Someone's changed for the better, hopefully. Top five choices for somebody who's new to community organizing. First, find out what those assets Find who's doing work in the area. Go out to learn about your community, who's engaged in the work. It's paramount for getting a handle on those. I might say after you've identified who, be willing to ask the questions of those people of the systems and the level of supports that are out there. Create a relationship with those folks within your community. Have a conversation about what is the current things that we're seeing within our community. I might do some research and look at the evidence on the table, whether that be data from a national statistic or a community provider about what is the local narrative, I might try 
to identify some goals, not 50 goals, not 10 goals, but just a couple of different, maybe three goals for what and why you're approaching the work. I might find other voices around the table or in your community that think like you do. Include their priorities, include their goals in your project, and then put a bookend on whatever you're doing project-wise, even from that achievable first goal. A year down the road, we want to have two of these things checked off, that we have something that we can actually tell others about. Start small, achievable. Be realistic, put some time-bound kind of goals out there, and you'll, you'll have some early successes. That's what you're after. Celebrate those successes. There are plenty of, of, of real needs out there, but you need to celebrate those small achievements and then go back and do it again. That's how you get started.